All right, guys, I had a massive, massive mess on my last round here. This uh, this frame that holds this hopper, these rollers on these hoppers right here, uh, the hopper doors, that is. Uh, this frame has spread out. And you can see, like, right up in there, it's all, all this is cocked out. And this hopper door dropped down me going down the road the other day, and thank God. Thank God that uh, that I was close to home when it happened. Just this front dropped down and I was leaking. Thank God it was just this this uh, this very front right here dropped down and I was leaking rice bran out right here. So what a mess that was. And uh, we'll uh, I never did video much of this. So uh, we had a mess. Let me tell you about it. Okay, so while we're waiting on our steaks to get room temperature so we can throw them on the grill and sear them, I'm going to tell y'all a story about what happened on the hopper deal. We, uh, we took off on a Wednesday morning. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a Monday morning. I, I had preloaded over the weekend, headed up north, and uh, we took off just like every other time we take off and we go the same route like we always do and uh, there's a about 20 miles over there's this town and when you go out of that town there's a little bridge that's got a dip in it i hit that dip and i looked back in my mirror because something caught my eye and there was dust going everywhere so i looked back and i seen that hopper door or seen the rice brand coming over and i pulled over and i got out and looked and i'm like oh my god what do i do now so uh i was on my way to go look at some stuff I was going to buy that's coming up uh, coming up in a new ep in an episode soon so I pull over look at my hopper door and the front of it in the on the driver's side is just is hanging down and that stuff just pouring out I'm like lord have mercy so I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do I call my broker and we dis discuss it and he calls the customer and uh, i kind of told him what i had on my mind is barring a a belt that you put up under the hopper and it's circular belt and it feeds another belt that goes up and dumps into a trailer uh they use it a lot fertilized places a lot of farm places have them and i knew i could find one because i was that close to home so uh long story short called the customer they said hey sure transfer it into another trailer so I called a couple buddies of mine that uh, manage some fertilizer places and farm places and uh, a farmer friend of mine had a belt. So uh, I go and I call my mom, my mom and my cousin come meet me at my friend's farm shop and uh, I leave my truck there. We get my pickup, go get the belt, come back to my buddy's farm shop and uh, go home get the 359 and get um, my cousin's hopper bottom and come out and transfer the load over so that's kind of how this week started and uh, it was a mess lots of uh, lots of love for my home folks uh, people i've known all my life helped me get this whole deal swapped over and it just tell you what you know living in a small town there's lots of goods and bads but I think the goods far outweigh the bad, and I'm just I'm thankful to have friends that help me and uh, like you know lifelong friends like uh, that my my buddy's farm shop, his dad, my dad are friends, my my grandpa used to gin his grandpa's cotton. I mean it goes back that far. You know we're talking about like you know 60 year old relationships, so. Uh, it's awesome that people band together and help you out like that. And uh, anyway, we got the load moved over, and I left with my cousin's trailer in the green truck the next day. And that's uh, just one of those things. It's a mess. I got to get the hopper fixed. Uh, we're going to switch gears uh, in a couple more videos. You'll probably see me swapping gears, swapping trailers. Going to do something different for the summer and work local so we can be at home with the fam and... Uh, just take some take some downtime and be at home every night and do things that I don't normally get to do. I had an opportunity come up where I could do some things like that and uh, you know make the same or better money and 
So I took it and I hated to because I love the road. I love trucking over the road and I'm not a I'm not a local guy. I'm not a get up at three o'clock in the morning and get home at, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon guy. I'm a, you know, <laughs> get up when I want to and truck to when I want to kind of guy. So anyway, so this is a story and uh later on in the week I start this video and that's where the video is gonna take off at. So all right, enjoy guys. Thank y'all. Okay, welcome to Amish country uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And we are picking up chicken byproduct meal somewhere or another. We're driving around this facility and they load us on the scale somewhere. And it's probably going to be a problem because they load me inside. So I've got something going on. Something happened. I think it's my... Uh, starter relay uh or not starter relay uh key switch relay uh behind the dash uh truck wouldn't crank i was at the washout while ago so but that's just what kind of week it is hopefully they will load us uh with the truck running if they don't i'm dead heading home i'm done all right so we're up here loading i can't tell between the blow by for my truck what exactly is this uh, crap in the air? And I'm sure it's blow by from this truck. So I'm gonna run back here and talk to my little buddy and see uh, what I need to be doing while he's loading. If I need to be washing a pile on the trailer or what. All right, we're just sitting here watching it load right now. So nothing to see here. Just waiting on it to pile up. We're gonna back up under a little bit and. We're gonna pray this guy knows what he's talking about because I just think my load's fixing me screwed up. As customary for my protocol hauling this, every time I get through loading it or dumping it, I clean everything up. Cause it don't, I mean, you get out of the truck 15 times loading this mess and you scrape off best you can. But yeah, when you get done, down to the nitty gritty here, I'm fixing to, I'm fixing to let this stuff, that foam just, Ugh, yeah, nasty. All right, y'all, welcome to Amish country. We loaded a while ago, and we've got to go south down to I-70 down there. And uh, we're just rolling through these rolling hills through here, but we've... Uh, We've made, we've been on 10 different, I bet 10 different roads in the past eight miles. I mean, every one we get on, it, the, I rarely ever use a GPS, but like there were so many turns down this route. I'm like, I can't, I, I, I'm on, I'm on loose track. I've already, I, I almost, I missed a turn and thank God when I was going to this place, there was a, there was a place that loaded trucks just up the road. So, ah, man, it's a it's an absolute mess. But uh, I bet you, before we get to seventy, which I don't think is probably about fifty miles down there, I bet you we've got to be on. I bet you it's a 20, 20 something different road. So it's like GPS quarter mile, take a left, quarter mile, take a right. You know. So anyway, we're fixing to pull up to this stop sign and go. I don't know, go some certain way.
Okay, I guess that's the world's largest picnic basket, maybe? I don't know. Whatever. All right, y'all, we stopped over here at the Road Ranger Marshall, Illinois. Fuel is creeping back up. Man, it's 418 at the pump here. Mud flap is like uh, 378, I think's what it is. It's a little bit higher than... Uh, that is cool right here. That's a 9670 International with a big bunk on it. I don't think I've ever seen one. That thing is it's pretty cool. Pretty dead gum cool. So anyway, uh, I'm fixing to get out. And I'm going to fill my passenger side tank up. I'm going to fill my tanks up one at a time. And uh, you look right there. We run it down kind of low. Uh, not like super low. I, I stopped. Uh, on a ramp a while ago, just to kind of get an idea of kind of trying to gauge it. You know, I don't, uh, I don't want to run out of fuel trying to figure out, you know, hey, if my tanks are leveling. So to see, make sure they're pretty level, I'm gonna fill the passenger side up first and uh, then fill the other side up, just kind of see how it goes and then check my mileage, see if it's been any better. But bought some LED bulbs for my dash i'm not sure i like them i like old school incandescent i think so i don't know I, i'm gonna see if it grows on me if it does i'm gonna buy more if it don't grow on me i'm taking it out so let's go out here and see uh go here and give them a mud flap code and see what they say uh see what this pump says when i get ready to uh, uh or when i get done pumping see what the verdict is make sure all this uh fuel lines and all this fixing this tank make sure it's all worth it i think it was all right 117 gallons this uh this place only lets you fill up till 990 so if i'm gonna get my true fuel mileage on this thing i won't have to go in there and give them another fuel code or some places they know how to carry it on over but yeah it's uh we're not gonna make it to we're gonna definitely go 990 for sure all right she's filled up we are 236 so it's 117 on the other and 236 that's uh, 119 within two gallons within two gallons i'm gonna take it the fuel mileage, we just ain't even gonna talk about that. I don't want y'all laughing at me. So, let me go in here and pay for this mess. Alright, y'all, we made it down here to Texas. Uh, I really didn't film nothing Friday coming into the house or coming down here because I didn't leave out until last night. So. Anyway, we got down here this morning and uh, seems that uh, I didn't film none of this last week because everything was just such a mess, but uh, the hopper doors just messed up on my trailer and I had to swap my load over into this trailer and doing that here I get here today and uh, they want my previous bill of lading and the numbers don't match up on anything else uh, the trailer numbers so they're having a conniption fit and don't won't take the load so they told me they wanted a uh, I built laden with a with a truck with the right trailer number on it. I'm like, okay, well, let me uh, let me go out here and get on Photoshop and see if I can hook you up. So that's what we're trying to do is get on Photoshop here and see if we can get this get this looking something similar. Uh, the worst part about it is, is like it's not just like in, in this bill laden like everything is bold and I can't make make stuff bold. So uh, I may have to call my buddy that loads me down there and uh, if I can't get this right and swap it over. Uh, I've got one of my dispatcher buddies over there. He's working on it right now too. So uh, whatever we can come up with that looks about halfway normal, that's probably what we're gonna go with. So anyway, uh, I guess I'll just let y'all know how it turns out. Yeah, so we got everything straightened out. Oh, I'll just tell you how we did it here in a minute. All right, so really all we did was change that trailer number on the paperwork and 
little Photoshop, little clearing the old uh, whiting out over the old trailer number and uh, just putting a new trailer number in, emailed it to these guys. And the, I figured we was gonna have a problem because the guy, this guy just like, he was on top of everything. Like when he first checked everything, he was like, trailer number, trailer. He was going from the washout to the previous bill. Trailer number, trailer number, truck number, truck number. You know, and, and like, he highlighting everything. And I'm like, boy, this is, uh, this could have been the worst time to have this happen. But, because uh, nobody ever really checks that, you know, like, like they should. But that guy did, of course. I thought it was going to have another problem because this, this trailer has a uh, couple of small holes in it. It rained over the weekend. I tried to keep it all inside. and uh, But anyway, it did not. Uh, he checked it a while ago, so I don't think we... He said, I'll be right back. So I'm hoping that we don't have a problem there. That being said, uh, the guy... Back to what I was saying. The guy checked that, that bill of lading. He printed it off. I emailed it to him. He printed it off. And then he called his boss and he, you know he's he's uh he's hispanic so i couldn't understand his boss was too and they were like you know talking and i couldn't understand what they were saying and uh the guy looked at me he said uh it just changed the number i'm like yeah that's i talked to his boss earlier and his boss said i need uh i need a uh I need a bill of lading with the right trailer number on it. So I just, okay, you get a bill of lading with the right trailer number on it. And that's what I did. So that's, uh, that's what happened. I, I just changed the bill of lading number or the, uh, trailer number on it. So anyway, that's what the guy said. He said, it's just, uh, the number has been changed on it. I said, that's what your boss told me to do. So that's what I did. So there we have it. Uh, it's just documentation. Uh, I swear this pet food sometimes I think it's worse as far as like uh, what they had to do for protocol because he told me he's like man they, I think he said the USDA he said man they, they could get me in trouble on the audit so anyway I mean like it looks good on the audit so there so anyway maybe this guy come back here in just a second let me dump let me get out of here I've been here for like three hours trying to get this crap straight and now uh now I'm ready to go eat lunch. I'm kind of hungry. So let's get out and unload, hopefully. Here he comes. All right, she's coming on off here. Hopefully this stuff won't get stuck too bad. It looks like it's it's gonna stick a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing after this. I don't know how, I'm sure we'll need a washout no matter what we do. And uh, that's one thing I gotta do now. I gotta try and figure out where the nearest washout is, but I also need to figure out where the heck I'm going and what I'm doing, cause I don't know yet. Alright, so we rolled around here. We're back on the scale now. I'm waiting on this little old girl to bring me my paperwork out here. I hope that's what she's gonna do. They come out here and got it a while ago, so I don't know why they wouldn't just bring it back out here, but I don't know. I'm gonna sit here in the air conditioner for a minute and uh she don't I guess she'll come back out with it in a couple minutes and I'll go in and hunt for it. 
But I don't know what we're gonna do out of here. I'm in a mood that I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a funk and I don't, I don't know. Just in a funk right now and I don't, nothing sounds appealing to me. I mean, I just, I don't know. I just wanna go home and my mind's tired, my body's tired. I'm just, I need some time, I think. So I don't know. I may go home after this. I don't, I'm gonna see what they got to, what they got to offer. Uh, I just don't know. So we'll see, and I'll let y'all know just as soon as I get out of here and find out. All right. Well, we finally got our barbecue. I need to look in here. It's kind of dark in here. I can't see much, but uh, well. All right. Well, we got our Dickie's barbecue anyway. Door dashed it out here. I didn't want to drive nowhere. Uh, got our baked beans and our green beans, but. Uh, we didn't get a fork or nothing with it, so. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna eat this right now. I'm trying to figure it out, so. I usually carry some forks and stuff with me, but uh, I can't find any in here, so I don't know where they are. I guess they're not in here, but uh, I don't know. I may run in here and see uh, see if I got some in the truck stop. I don't really feel like walking all the way back in there, but it is what it is. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure it out, but. Uh, got us some brisket anyway. Got a load in the morning and it's going back to the house. So we in good shape. All right, we're getting up early this morning. All right, look at the moon though. The thing looks cool. It's been going down fast. Like I just did my log book a second ago. Then it still went way down. So anyway, we're fishing to jump in the Houston traffic here and go try to, uh, Try to get loaded real quick. We got to go get washed out and then get loaded. So uh, let's get this going because traffic is going to get wild uh, coming in from the east side. Well, it don't matter what side you're coming in to Houston, it's wild. So, all right, let's get rolling. Getting no wash out here, oh boy. Trying to finish up. We're trying to uh, get, it's gonna be right about time to load when we get there. They get there at eight, so hopefully we'll be there just in time. Alrighty, here we are. We gotta back up in this building right here at an angle, cause we've got everything else in the way in here. So let me get off here and concentrate. All right, here's the setup here. This is a big hopper with a I don't know what size screw this is but this man this auger right here to get it done they uh it's probably gonna take about 20 30 minutes probably less than 30 minutes I'll be loaded here probably probably 20 minutes so this ain't gonna last too long right here but they loading this sweet potato pellets up right in here these are export these are like from China or somewhere so yep China sweet potato pellets going in our dog food So we made it over here to unload. Uh, old boy told me these not to crack this thing open too much because I guess it'll choke it down. So we're just going to, he said about two inches, so we're going to go about two inches. Something about like that. 
I ain't gonna get too aggressive with it. I don't wanna choke this thing down. It'll ruin everybody's day, including mine, but I wish that every place I went to had that. These bins right here, these spans just suck that dust all up in here. It makes it a, oops, you see it? Pulling that dust right out of there. That's the way to go in my eyes. I like that. All right, slow and steady. That's uh, that's what they want here. You don't want to choke this thing down, so it's probably going to take a while on this. This is uh, this don't unload as good as milled. Tell you what, we ain't been unloading maybe I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Unloaded a lot, a lot faster than what it's looking. Cause you can see daylight through uh, through what's dropping, but yeah, ain't doing too bad. I can't complain. So I guess here in just a second, I'm gonna have to get out and get down and open that door up just a little bit more there. Unload the rest of this uh, front hopper here. All right, so we're just slowly, slowly, slowly open this up so we don't get a big surge off that that back wall on the front hopper here. So. I just been slowly this thing's got two speed gears on here so you can open this real real a bunch of these makes a real slow makes it open slower or i didn't even make no sense what i'm saying is it takes a bunch of turns to open this up just a little bit Ooh, i'm back up out of that All right, all right, so with these two-speed doors, you can see. And that's. And then you go to high gear like this. Slider over there in a big hole. All right, just like that. That's how them two-speed boxes work on these hoppers. All right, let's get her, get her crank handle on there. So we'll kind of know where to stop. Come over here. Draw us a line in the dirt and we can follow that crank handle and see exactly where we need to stop. Oh, well, I was gonna show you how I pull up. I had the camera in the mirror and show you how I followed the shadow of this thing and line it up with that. And then that'll put the front of my hopper where it needs to be right there so anyway i guess my thumb bumped the camera where it turns on and off and i didn't get to show y'all that but yeah that shadow you, a lot of times you can see the shadow sometimes you just line the crank handle up with it but you follow the shadow right there and draw your line throw you something on the ground and that uh that way you'll know where to catch your hopper at or stop your hopper at all right, so we're gonna go, let's put this thing over here in low gear. Just very slow, very easy. That's packed in there a little tight. I don't know if I want to get the vibrator a little bit on that. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to open her up a little bit more. The bad part about it is when it starts falling, I'm gonna have to get back over here in high gear and shut it before it clogs their auger up. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the high gear.
All right, so we got her started there, and that worked out pretty good. This guy come out a while ago, and they want us to start grounding. Grounding our trucks, our trailers, and I'm guessing, I don't know if it's something to do with the dust and, uh, you know, get a spark in here. You get enough dust in here and a spark, and, and uh, yeah, you can make a sonic boom real quick. I don't know if that's what that's for, but I'm guessing it's something to do with that. Well, quite naturally, if you put 8,000 more pounds in the back than you do the front, it takes longer to unload, but it just seems like it is taking way longer to unload. It may just be me. Uh, I'm ready to get the heck out of here, even though there's no, I had to wait on nobody, but I'm impatient today. I'm kind of anxious. I'm ready to go home. It's, it's Wednesday. It's not really been that good of a week, so. I'm just uh, don't want to go back out the end of the week. And I'm just, I'm not. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home and uh, try to unwind a little bit, man. I've been wound up here lately. And last, I don't know, you know, last forever I've been wound up. But it's just, I don't know. I need, I need, I need, I need some time, I guess. So I'm going to go take some time. All right. We done got empty. <laughs> There's that guy out there in the desert with the base station. So we're gonna pull up on the scales here, scale out and call her a day for sure at 9.30 in the morning.